Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this presentation done by Paula Hunter and myself. Uh, Paula is the Mojadoo Foundation Executive Director. My name is Costa Peric. I'm the Mojadoo Foundation Chair of the Board and also Deputy Director of the for Financial Services for the Poor at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Let's start by putting ourselves in the shoes of someone who lives on less than $2 per day on average. It is expensive to be poor. Why? Because uh, these, the poor people, the only way they have to transact fin uh, for financial transactions is with cash. And dealing with cash, beside, in addition to security issues, takes time and energy because essentially to pay for things, you have to walk. You have to walk to uh, the utility, you have to walk to school, you have to work to the merchant to actually hand over the cash, which takes time and energy. Um, and because and in the case of uh, where these people live, sometimes walking to the school can take you hours. Um, the other interesting case is when uh, a, a rural household has a child in a, working in the city, the, the son may want to send money back, uh, but in fact, probably he has to pay to transport this cash uh, back to the family because he has to pay some friend or bus driver to actually travel and do that. So it is very difficult uh, and expensive to be poor and be and essentially also be excluded from the formal economy by dealing only with cash. So the, the basic innovation that first time helped this population of which by the way, there is 1.7 billion on the planet today. And if we look at Africa, 400 million. So the basic, the first innovation that aimed to help people in this situation uh, was invented in Kenya uh, some 11 years ago uh, through a commercial system called M-Pesa that was run by a telco provider and that's uh, called, that was called mobile money. And the way it works is that uh, it allows uh, you to send and receive money pretty much in the same way that you send and receive text messages. Uh, over time, uh, the system in Kenya has proven hugely successful in terms of helping uh, the poorest uh, access to uh, the formal economy and uh, easing the burden on their lives. And in some cases, get out of poverty by better, better managing their money. And PESA has also proven that it can be profitable to serve this population, obviously in a very different way than a traditional bank uh, would do. So over time, if we look at Africa, uh, a number of mobile money operations were created. We see here the situation in 2018 with some statistics, but in fact today over more than 250 operations uh, exist in Africa. Uh, in terms of mobile money. And so while this was, this is obviously great and uh, shows great progress, still today, as I mentioned, there is 1.7 billion people remaining to be connected. And therefore there is a need to accelerate uh, further this innovation to do that. How do we do that? The key word is interoperability. And in this, in, for this one, it's Tanzania actually that innovated uh, a few years ago where the four mobile money operators started uh, essentially connecting their systems together. And by doing that, uh, they actually are going the market before in, you know, the typical mobile money operation uh, today uh, uh, is like a silos in the sense that both the sender and receiver have to be on the same network uh, to be able to transact. And while it's great, it's also very limiting. Imagine that you had a mobile phone 
where you could talk to people only uh, connected to the same network as you, it wouldn't be very useful. Well, mobile money is the same. And in Tanzania, these four mobile money operators realized this and interconnected their systems together. So let's see what was the result of that. So as you can see, interoperability really allows to grow the market. Um, and uh, when uh, financial service providers realize that an interconnect, we observe this uh, huge uh, exponential curve of growth. Another good example of this would be in India, the UPI system, which is also a real-time interoperable payment platform connecting banks. In India, we saw this also this huge curve of, of growth. So that shows how interoperability is the next wave of innovation. And in the, in the case of um, interoperability, one question obviously comes to mind is how to do it. And that is where MojaLoop uh, open source software plays a role. MojaLoop is uh, an open source free for everyone software that enables easily to connect various financial service providers and payment systems together. And uh, therefore it, it is uh, kind of like a, a tool to, for people to take and uh, implement interoperability in service of uh, market financial inclusion, but also growing the markets in uh, low income countries and elsewhere as well. Before I hand over to Paula to explain in more detail what Moja Loop is, uh, let me just finish with this last slide that shows kind of a typical architecture of a, a payment system platform in a country or region. Um, and on, on the bottom side show, shows the collaborative space where typically we see collaboration to create rules uh, that govern the payment platforms and the obviously the regulatory framework that applies. And then the rails that are actually providing the interconnectivity and uh, payment flows. And these two layers are typically considered utilities. So collaborative space to, to create these rails. And this is where the Mojave Foundation is active and working. Uh, the why, why it is important to create this payment platform as a utility, because it's a level playing field for competitive providers to come in to provide accounts and wallet services and also innovative applications. So that's how this ecosystem works, essentially is uh, collaborate to compete better. So that's a brief overview of financial inclusion and payment platforms, uh, interoperable payment platforms. Now let me hand over to Paula uh, to talk more about Mojulu. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Costa. Uh, and thank you all for joining us today to hear more about Mojaloop and the Mojaloop Foundation. I think what I would like to start with here today is to emphasize that uh, Mojaloop is an open source software toolkit that's designed to enable interoperability across payment service providers. So folks are free to download the open source software. It's Apache 2.0 licensed, it's on GitHub, and we welcome folks that want to learn more about Mojaloop, deploy it or operate it, to, to visit our GitHub repository and, and dive right in and uh, get to know the, the platform. 
But let's talk a little bit more about uh, the design of Moja Loop and, and how it came about. Uh, the fundamental principles behind the design of the Moja Loop platform is the financial inclusion level one project principles. The level one project uh, was defined by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and these principles are an important foundation to our decisions with regard to the platform. First of all, we provide an open loop interoperable platform uh, for providers to engage with. We adhere to international financial inclusion standards. We provide push, a push payment model with immediate fund transfer and same day settlement. We want to ensure adequate system wide shared fraud and security protection. Efficient and proportional know your customer uh, standards. Meeting or, or exceeding the convenience and cost and utility of cash, which is so important in these times of pandemic. Uh, folks are really uh, conscious about shifting away from cash. Um, and, it, and we have to provide a customizable uh, software stack so that folks can update and evolve their systems to ensure appropriate compliance with their own operational standards and local and, and national regulations. So the Modulup Foundation is relatively new. We were just formed uh, in May of this year. And we were founded uh, based on the principles of providing inclusive digital payments in emerging economies. Uh, we're very fortunate to have the support of both charitable and technology leaders in this space. From a charitable side, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the Rockefeller Foundation, and Omidyar Network have invested in the Mojalu project uh, because it lines with their charitable mission and uh, is, is consistent with the standards that they want to see employed to address financial inclusion. We're also very fortunate to have technology leaders like Google, Coil, Modusbox, Ripple, PhonePay, Jory Digital, and Cybrin, who have joined in on this initiative to provide the technology leadership and insight to deploy Mojaloop around the globe. So the, the, the compatibility between our mission and our technology partners will allow us to uh, expand and grow uh, around the world. And the Mojula platform is not new. Um, the good news is we started work on this in 2016. We uh, kicked off the project uh, in, in mid-year of 2016. We started work on an open API specification. We launched the open source platform in 2017. And then we started launching community meetings, uh, the first one being held in 2018. We've since just finished our 12th community meeting uh, just this past October. Um, and so we've really made a tremendous amount of progress, even uh, given the fact that as a legal entity, we only formed this year. Uh, we're now in our uh, closing days of, of phase four development. And we're planning for phase five development in January of 2021. And as Costa mentioned, we've been engaging with the marketplace to start seeing deployments of the Mojalu offering. The Bank of Tanzania is working with the code base to initiate a single payer system, payment system. And we also have Mawali, which is a first commercial deployment which is a joint venture between Orange and MTN, which are two very large mobile network operators in, in Africa. And they have uh, announced a Pan-African partnership to deploy Mojaloop based platforms. Uh, they have launched uh, implementations this year and will continue to expand and grow those implementations uh, into next year. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about our development model and, and why um, it is so important for us to have this inclusive uh, developer community. We, um, we, we follow an agile development process, which means that we uh, iterate on our work on a regular cadence. Uh, three times a year, we have, we have meetings where we talk about our work stream prog progress and we establish our priorities for the next program increment. 
the community is very much involved in determining what work streams we will focus on in the upcoming program increment. Um, and that's based on market requirements and gap analysis, uh, again, that the, the community articulates as uh, being a priority. It's a very open process. It's inclusive of developers, implementers, and customers. Uh, so everyone can participate in our community meetings and everyone has a vote on what our priorities are for the next iteration of, of work. As I mentioned, we entered phase four of our development cycle early this year. We're wrapping it up and uh, we'll launch phase five in, in our January uh, meeting uh, in 2021. Some of the core technologies are, are, are technologies that many of you on this, in this presentation are probably very familiar with. Uh, so as you can see, we have uh, an array of open source tools and technologies that are the underpinnings of the Mojo Loop platform. Of course, Linux-based, but many other uh, important technologies are part of the solution. And I have to thank uh, many of you that have contributed to these other technologies that are really uh, essential for us to be able to deploy this, this type of solution. With regard to hosting of the platform, we're infrastructure agnostic. We, uh, our development platform right now is on Amazon Web Server. We have Azure implementations uh, already deployed, but we also want folks to have the freedom to do on-premise installations with some government and regulatory agencies having very tight control of the infrastructure and the data uh, really dictates how they host the platform. Uh, so it's perfectly acceptable and, and designed to be either cloud-based or uh, hosted in-house. Uh, if you want more details on the tools and technologies, uh, you should just uh, check out our, our GitHub repositories and uh, you can find out a lot more about the tools and technologies that make up the Modulo platform. Let's talk a little bit more about our community. Uh, from the onset, we really wanted the Mojo Loop uh, community to be multinational, uh, provide perspective around the globe with regard to this platform. Um, our center of gravity for our early work was to meet market needs in Africa, where there is a large percentage of unbanked and underserved uh, individuals. Uh, but we have contributions and input from, com country, from countries across the globe. Uh, we're up to over, over 650 participants in our community. We span six continents, 47 countries, and we have 10 sponsor promoter members. So when we do those week long planning sessions, community meetings, as, as I mentioned, we just finished one earlier in October, uh, we get input from all over the globe from a wide range of participants, whether it be digital financial service providers, central banks, implementers, open source developers. So it's a very rich and uh, robust community that's uh, guiding us uh, through our development. And what we wanna do is make sure that we have this ecosystem that benefits everyone. There's a lot of stakeholders here involved in the Mojo Loop uh, solution. First of all, there's fintechs, uh, fintechs and banks that can use the code to modify internal systems or extend their external, their internal systems so that they can easily interoperate with other payment providers. Central banks can speed up deployment of nat national payment gateways uh, and, and work with commercial partners Again, uh, having an interoperable platform. Governments can use Mojo Loop to deliver support payments to citizens right into their mobile wallets. As you know, with the pandemic right now, uh, government payments are becoming increasingly uh, frequent and the necessary for efficient, cost-effective and speedy delivery is, uh, has never been more important. Merchants uh, want their customers to be able to pay their bills directly from their phones. The reduction of use of cash is always uh, desirable for merchants and, and banks. And then the users, as, as Costa mentioned, some, some users today have to walk miles or pay money, pay for someone to transport their miles to send money to their relatives or to pay a small bill. Uh, this way, uh, they, using a Mojo Loop enabled system, they can use their mobile phones and, and reduce the cost and complexity of, of being part of the banking system. 
there's four primary ways in which Mojaloop enables an interoperable payments platform. First, there's an interoperability layer that connects bank accounts, mobile money wallets, and merchants in an open loop system. Open loop is so important here uh, to, be to make sure that consumers are not locked into one platform and can share money across different platforms. We have a directory service layer that navigates different methods that providers use to identify accounts on each side of a transaction. So specific to what the service provider needs uh, in order to validate those accounts. We have transaction settlement, la a layer that makes payments instant irre and irrevocable. If you're making $2 a day, if you're living off of $2 a day, you cannot afford to wait uh, 24 hours or 48 hours for a payment to clear. Uh, it's so critical to have instant uh, payment settlement. And of course, we have components for designing and implementing strong, strong internal fraud controls. Uh, we need that, that component to be very flexible for the unique requirements of each region and uh, regulatory requirements. Now, I know a lot of you in the audience probably understand the benefits of open source, but it, it, it warrants reiterating the advantages of open source software in delivering the Mojaloop platform. First of all, it, there's a lower capital cost upfront to, de to deploy the open source software. As you know, open source software is license free and it allows people to not only uh, deploy without those costs, but also to test drive and create a, a proof of concept or uh, do a sandbox in a very low cost way uh, to get themselves going with the platform. As far as lower maintenance costs are concerned, because this is a shared effort across many organizations, as we continue to expand those that are involved, if we have multiple banks, multiple central banks, multiple fintechs, it's likely that some of their challenges or issues or requirements are similar. And uh, that, that allows us to share the efforts of maintaining those, those uh, various offerings and features across the community. There's also no vendor lock-in. Uh, so there doesn't, doesn't require you to go, if you need new features, if you need enhancements, uh, you don't have to go back to a vendor and write a check to see that, that work happen. You able, you're able to tap into the community. And again, probably find like-minded companies that have similar requirements and share the burden of developing that additional functionality and maintaining that additional functionality. So this is, um, you know, this development model is the perfect solution for rolling out a low cost interoperable platform for financial inclusion. And the entire ecosystem benefits. Uh, so as Mojaloop comes online, it, it will reach, uh, it could reach up to 1.6 billion individuals that currently have no banking accounts today. Businesses will see an increase in the transaction volume. Uh, it, in estimates by uh, the, the folks that wrote this, this study, is, it's well over two, $2 trillion. Digital financial service providers will see more transaction and activity, new account holders um, and new participants in, in their offerings. And governments will save billions of dollars in being able to disperse uh, funds out to the populace in a more cost-effective way rather than cutting checks or uh, dispersing cash. So there's plenty of opportunities for you to engage with us, and we encourage you to investigate more fully on how you might be able to do that. But let's talk about uh, a couple of ways in which you can, uh, you can collaborate with us. First of all, our, our, our ultimate goal is to see adoption of the Mojaloo uh, platform out in the marketplace. So whether you're a central bank, a digital financial service provider, or other financial institution, we'd encourage you to test out the code, try it out. We will help you uh, with, with uh, setting up a, a sandbox and a proof of concept and, um, and uh, enabling you to adopt the platform. 
you can also contribute uh, to the platform. Of course, we're always looking for uh, for developers to contribute code to the various work streams that we are we are um, working on. But there's other ways to contribute. You can contribute on documentation. You can contribute on advocacy, awareness, education. Uh, so there's a number of ways that you can engage with the community. And, and hopefully when you come to our website, you'll find a number of ways. And if it's not clear to you, reach out to myself, our community manager, our product manager, we'll happily walk you through the various areas that need your support. And then finally, you can join the Mojo Loop Foundation. As I mentioned, we were formed in uh, May of this year as a 501c3 nonprofit. Uh, and of course, there are some operating costs in ensuring that we have the development platform in place, that we have staff to manage the community, that we provide the, the sales tools and, and uh, training materials for the community to advance the use of, of Mojo Loop. Uh, that always uh, obviously uh, involves some cash outlay. And so by joining as a member of the foundation, such as some of our other benefactors have recently, you can help underwrite the on, ongoing cost and, and development of the platform. So with that, a couple of things I'd, I'd encourage you to check out. Uh, first of all, do check out our, our website, mojaloop.io. Um, we also uh, have a, a community manager, Simeon Orico, who is available uh, to, to engage with you, to talk to you about how you might participate in, in the development work or in other areas. Uh, there also is a discourse uh, session, uh, the, the link that you see in the Mojaloop underscore OSS F20. That is a discourse session where you can ask additional questions about uh, this session or about Mojaloop in general. So we'd, we'd uh, certainly encourage you to, to participate, engage, and, and ask any questions. We're here to help you understand more about how Mojaloop can really make an impact on financial inclusion, and we'd welcome your participation. Thank you very much.